Okay, so let's continue for a bit for a bit on these uh, what is HCI just to conclude with the the process that we are sort of going to to follow uh, you already have the main ideas also from the assignment of what we're going to do we're going to understand the needs and then we are going to understand the needs again and then we are going to uh, define and to do a first prototype evaluate it another prototype evaluate it in a different way another different prototype and then the final prototype in code and so we are iterating three times uh, on prototypes on different type of prototypes and with different kind of uh, evaluations and the last one actually doesn't have evaluation uh, because it's enough for you without that evaluation. So that is more or less the process we're going to follow. And we will also follow a similar process in describing these various, to various topics and methods especially for doing these activities. So the first thing that we are going to, after this, to speak is need finding. That is the way in which we, we call all these processes, all the methods to get to find needs from people. And then uh, defining, synthesizing the needs, and then prototype, and then evaluating. And in the meantime, we also cover a few other things like guidelines for various topics that can help doing the design, expert evaluation, etc. But first of all, let's speak about the usability. Uh, so usability, we mentioned before that we have a standard definition, that is this one. This is actually an ISO standard, 9000 and something. Uh, this, the defined usability, so it's, form, it's formal. The defined usability has the extent to which a system, product, servi service can be used by specified users to achieve specific goals, more of the same. There is people that want to accomplish a goal. We say that in an application domain, they say in a specific context of use is not so different, uh, but they add three words. It's the extent to which a system can support users in, the, in, their, domain, in their domain in doing their goal with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. And then there are two notes, but they are not really fundamental now. So, a uh, more or less formal definition of usability is how well people can use the system functionality. If you want to take a system and throw it out of the window, that's bad usability. You don't need uh, a master degree to understand that. So if you, it's enjoyable to use a system, that is a good use, system that gives usability. And usability has typically all these dimensions. It's not easy to, to use, to define it, to measure only usability as a one metric, but as a series of dimensions that can be measured. And again, our about usefulness, we mentioned that uh, we would like to do a system that is useful, use, used and usable. But this useful is also a metric, a dimension of the usability. It's useful, does it something that people, that specific people for which the system is designed want or they don't want to use it at all. Usefulness. Learnability. Is it easy to learn or not? Do I need to do a three month training to use uh, the Polytechnic app or it should be something that immediately I can use it? Learnability. Memorability, do I remember what I learned? Because I can learn how to use a system in 10 minutes and then stop using the system for three months because I do other things. Uh, after three months, if I have to use the system again, do I remember how to use it? That is memorability, the capability to once learned 
to remember how it works, how to use it. Uh, effectiveness. Uh, I have a goal. Does it allow me to reach the goal? And efficiency. Once learned, hmm, clearly, after learning how to use it, is it fast to use? I am efficient with the system? Hmm? And I am effective and it's useful? Etc. if we read the list on the contrary. Visibility, we will meet visibility so many times that you will be tired to, to hear this word and I will be tired to, to tell this word. Visibility is the state of the system visible. I know what is going on now. There is an error, I see there is an error. The system is processing something, I see that it's processing or it seems stuck, blocked in some cases, because it's doing some operation, but it's not informing me of the operation. I am in a form, hmm? in a survey, in a form. I know how long is this form. I am step three of 11, I'm step three of four, or I'm step three of 100. All of this is visibility of the system state. And I know that I'm step three, it's written somewhere, or I have to remember that I click next twice. That is visibility. Errors. Are errors few? Errors will let them. Are errors few and especially recoverable? There is a way to recover from errors. I went in a place where there is an error. Can I come back and solve, redo the process, solve the error, etc.? And also dimension visibility is satisfaction. It's enjoyable to use or it's something that maybe it's useful, effective and efficient, et cetera, but every time that they open it, I say, okay, I, I need to do this. We can, I can survive one more time, or it's something that is not disgusting at least to use it. Hmm? So satisfaction is also something that we, we want to keep in mind for usability. Uh, and clearly, this is not a dimension, but something that we already said, don't make me think. It should be immediate to use. I should understand quickly what to do. Hmm? Without saying, oh, why is this? I need to read all of this to understand that I need not to click here, but to click there. Hmm? Uh, so here there's an example of something that is, makes people think, but not think in a good way, think in a waste of time way. Hmm? So for instance, here in the picture say, pretty busy here, there's a lot of text, bold, underlined, where it should start? Where it should start in this page? Which is the entry point of this page? Is here or is here or is, which is where to start? I have to think where to start. This is the navigation. Is this the navigation or something else? Uh, here I read the name. What does it mean, this name? I don't understand that name. Uh, here there is a, a, a face of a person. Can I click on the, that thing or it's just an image? Which are the elements that are clickable and the elements that are not? Hmm? What happens if I click here? Oh, I don't want to click. There is, your colleague was saying before, if I click cancel, in the case cancel versus close, I fear that it will be, uh, I delete all my operation. I lose my operation. I have to think, okay, I'm doing a hypothesis, and I don't know if this hypothesis is what, is how the system actually work. So I'm, I'm to think. So if the system is more expressive and easy to use and immediate to understand, I don't have to think too much about this kind of thing. I can focus on more important thing in, in my life, let's say. So the, the human-centered design process that we more or less are going to, to use in this course that is simplified here and it's generic, but it's the, uh, the, the, the closest picture that we, we were able to find is this one, this one. Uh, we will start with what is needed more than wanted. Let's say, let me use needed, not wanted. What is needed and all the methods that are useful for understanding what is needed, that is a need finding. Then you go to an analysis phase. 
which you have a, a list of needs and you need to have requirements. I need this, but now I have to build an application. Now I have to build a system. I cannot use the needs directly. I have to come up with a solution that satisfies those needs. And this is analysis. And for instance, here there are two ways to do analysis. One is the scenario. We will see those and a few others. One is the task analysis. Then there is the design that in our case will be, then there is the design uh, and the prototype. And then again, and evaluation. Evaluation is not explicit, but it's written here. So after the prototype evaluation, and then maybe I need to change something in the analysis after the first evaluation, because I, I get some design choice that are wrong or improvable. And so I go back maybe a little bit on the analysis, understand that, okay, I can change these, and then I will design something different, do another prototype, another evaluation. And this loop can be infinite um, in, in theory. We will stop it because the course end. And in outside the university, they will stop, in any case, this loop uh, because you have to, at a certain point, deploy the system. You cannot iterate forever. Because everything is perfectible, but at a certain point you have to ship the product, the service, whatever. But this is useful for having multiple rounds of prototyping. How much depends of the time, of the effort, of the process and framework that you are using. You're using design thinking, you're using user-centered design, it depends. That is something very practical and dependent on where you go to work or apply these, domain, these techniques. Mm -hmm. so, but this is the common denominator among all these things. Needs, analysis, design, prototype of some level, refining the design, another prototype, at a certain point, the product, the service, the one that I will deploy and launch for use in a company, let's say, with architecture, documentation, helps, everything working, the version one of the project. And here are, we stay still, let's say, in the beta phases, in which we are drafting something, creating something. Here we decide in, the implement, in this implement and deploy, we are decided that the system should work in this way, should appear in this way, and we are going to do that. And we are not going back from here, until the next release, until our redesign process. And this is a process that you can do if you have a system already in place, uh, or if you have a new system. I will make, uh, ask, I will make you an example. Uh, you all know, or maybe you all have or know, the mobile application of the Polytechnico, right? You have it, no? Yes, uh, and you like it a lot, I imagine. It's wonderful. It's the best application ever. And since it's so good, um, we, we had a thesis in collaboration. We have current a thesis undergoing in collaboration with the, the IT area of the Polytechnico to redo that application, uh, hopefully better. Not that it's hard, but hopefully better. And, and they did exactly this. They were former students of this course. They spoke with students to understand which are the tasks with their application. Because the application can do everything, but it's everything that you want to do, maybe not. You have to organize maybe information, not just put everything in the <clears throat> home page with the same level of importance. So they speak with students. They do sort of need finding for redesigning the app. And then they do some analysis, they do some prototype, they do some evaluation with students in the last semester not student this course of other courses. And now they are closing their thesis and hopefully this application will be engineered and delivered to, to everybody. So that part, if this um, arrived to a conclusion, uh, you will have a new application, the, the, the next students uh, of Polytechnic will have a new application, will never see this uh, wonderful thing that you are using, that we are using, sorry, we are using. Also, we have the same great application, and we will see the other one that will follow, that follow basically this process. 
within a thesis, so six months. So they didn't iterate a lot. They did a low fidelity prototype, a medium fidelity, pro medium high fidelity prototype, and then they, so they iterate here twice for a low fidelity and a medium high fidelity prototype, and then they implement it. Time constraint, six months of a thesis. And they, and this case is something that they need to deploy, the Polytechnic will need to deploy and to maintain for both Android and iOS. So it's something that is continuing. Hmm? But they follow this process, also for redesigning things, not just for creating um, something that doesn't exist. Uh, so the main steps, I already told you briefly, but need finding, what is needed? How are people currently accomplish the goal that they have in mind? How they work now? How do you book the uh, hand roll to an exam now? Let me see the process. What you do, what you don't, the, the imprecation that you say, everything, the process. What's current to extract the need. Not what you want, but what you need. That is different. And this can be done with a series of methods that we will see, hopefully today, um, that are observation, interviews, contextual inquiry, surveys, diaries, etc. And we will ask you to apply a few of them in the course. Not all of them, because there are a lot, but a few of them in the course. Uh, then there is the analysis. You, you, you find the needs, but you have to, to formalize, to structure the, these needs, because they will be, oh, this person, these three people told me this, but this is not structured. Hmm? So we will need to structure this a little bit in the analysis phase, there could be scenarios, stories, tasks, extracting tasks from the need. Hmm? Then there is the design. The choices you make for creating an interactive system or a user interface. And this is according to the goal, according to the task, according to what you learn, according to the context, but also according to rules, guidelines, principles, expert evaluation that we are going to do to improve without hmm, involving user in this moment, in this design moment, we can, we could, but we are trying to use the guideline, the design principle, the best practice to avoid well-known errors and problems so that we don't find something that we know that is not working. Weasel layout, Etc. Then iteration of prototypes, hmm? in this case involving user in the evaluation of the prototype. And then we, don't, we are not going to do this, but uh, in the process we can also have the deployment of the, not of the prototype, the implementation and deployment of the real product. We will not go in that, we will stop. We will cut this, this loop here at a certain point and we will stop here, at the middle of this loop. With, with an exit here to the exam and after. So this is more or less the process that we are going to, um, to follow. Uh, here there is a few slides about HCI in the software process on their software engineering perspective. Uh, very quickly, it's not something that we, um, we are going to, to do or ask you to do. But again, also in the software engineering process, there are a lot of processes, not just the one that I told you on the design perspective, but also the software engineering, they already have their processes. The waterfall, again, the agile, the lean, and all the one that will, uh, so processes in software engineering, those in interaction design are things that born every now and then and die. And so also design thinking is pretty recent with respect to user-centered design. Service design also is pretty recent with respect to others, and there are waves of uh, more popularity, less popularity, a new design process, etc. But they exist, they share uh, more or less the same goal, and when, where, and how does HCI fit in, this, in, this, in, the, in all these processes? And the answer is generally always a step ahead. So before every design step, every implementation step, any product interaction, 
you can consider some of these things. You can extract needs, you can analyze needs to, to define a requirement in a software engineering terminology, to evaluate with users, to apply guidelines, to apply principle hmm, before designing the software, before implementing the product. At the beginning of each sprint uh, of the agile methodology, etc. This is just more a message than um, uh, it's more a consideration than not. And then there are other two slides, but this is mostly related to these, uh, including that usability, safety, performance are, for instance, part of non-functional requirements. So when you build a system and you have functional requirement and non-functional requirement, usability is a non-functional requirement. So you are satisfying a requirement of yours if you do a usable system. And this close, what is human, center, human computer interaction? Um, and more or less the process that we are going to, to follow. Um, now let's start speaking on the first step of this process that is not finding, but first of all, the game. You know this, right? I, I, I discovered it two days ago. I, 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 I never seen this, this page before. We don't, we have this, but we, with our courses, so it's empty basically. Uh, I never open it. Uh, but you know, when I told you that we had a little bit of creativity in creating the schedule of the course, I have a, an, another course in this semester in which the creativity level was maximum. And so I received a lot of emails by students saying to me, your course, that is an elective course, is overlap with everything. And they put a picture of this to, to tell me, see, it's overlapping. And yes, I see. And we, I was able to change the, I spent so many hours to change the schedule of, that, of the course, but in the end, it's not overlapping anymore with everything. It's overlapping with something, not with everything. But yeah. But they share with me all these pictures. And I, this is an actual picture of the, I don't know which, which degree. It's a, not a master degree, this is a bachelor degree. So I discovered it yesterday, two days ago. Um, so what is this? Tell me what is this that you probably know this better. What is this? Here's the schedule of the classes. That is where? In your mobile application of the Polytechnic. And I, I think that, that there is something on the top of this, right? And what is something, what, what there is? I don't know, really, I, I, I cannot see that. No, the, like a, a, a legend, okay. And the calendar, um, so it's the last hour, uh, 7.30 p.m., or it continues forever, or until, I don't know, up to nine. Okay, so, uh, all of fame, all of shame. Who say fame? Who say shame? No, fame, sorry, sorry. Who say fame? One, two, three, and the half, uh, four, five, six, seven. Who say shame? No, no, look, harise your hand better. And the others are, um, not sure. Okay, so why fame? That's the other question that you clearly... It's easy to understand. If you're not colorblind, it's easy to understand. If you're colorblind, I think that you don't understand anything, but yeah, it's easy to understand. No, it's not so bad, I agree. It's not really, sh it's not shame like the other one of the other classes. That's not that level of shame, clearly. Um, uh, who say shame instead, why? That is one great reason, reason to put it in the all of shame. You have, so I, I don't know, I know which is my course, the course that I teach. And also there is a hint there because in the screenshot, but and I know the schedule of my course, so I know which is one, but which, is, which are the courses that you, show, that you see here? 
I have no idea. I mean, I know that mine is this one. It was this one. And also this. And also this is at Labing. Um, because I know the schedule. And here is my, my name here with the, the color. So I, I see the color. But this is not a great way to represent this information. Uh, yes, color can be useful. Uh, maybe in this case, too much color, too many different colors. Um, but the point that he makes is, is a great point, actually. You have to remember, that's the main point here. Everything else could be debatable. But you have to remember the association, exam, course, color, while you see the program. And this is something that requires you to think and to remember. And it's something that we, we should not do. So it's not terrible, it's not the greatest calendar ever. Yes, also in terms of visibility, there is not, yes, because it's a, a, a smartphone screen, I don't know which, and so it's, it's also uh, reduced. And, and you also have the, if you want to, to go over, you, you, do you need, yes, probably someone needs, but do you need until 9 p.m.? How many courses do you have at, until 9 p.m.? Hmm? There is a few courses in the entire university that are at that time. Also, uh, also, but there are also courses on Saturday morning. I don't see Saturday here. A few courses on Saturday morning. Not a lot, but probably the same number between 7 and 9 p.m. So why 7, 9 p.m. yes, and Saturday not? Maybe they had, I don't, I'm not saying that they, had, they didn't have a, a, a right reason to do that, but it's debatable. Um, and also, I tried that mine. You, if, you, if you change the date and you pick Wednesday, you see the week of that date. So it's not change day, it's change week. It should be called change week, not change day. Because if I want to see Wednesday, if the interface tell me choose Wednesday, and I choose Wednesday, I want to see Wednesday. Not Monday, Tuesday, etc. Just one day. Or allow me to pick the week. Hmm? So this is, there is a lot of things to criticize about this. Um, it's hard to do a, cal a weekly calendar in this small space. There's something that we can uh, recognize. Um, also, the choice of color could be debatable. Um, hmm? Ah, colors can be changed. Uh, some people here doesn't know. So <laughs> colors can be changed. So if you want to change colors, go to him and I will explain. And he told me that ask five euros for the explanation each. <laughs> okay, so how we, so I will say that is a little bit more all of shame than not all of fame hmm? for, for all these reasons. And which is why you, Look at this. Why you open this in your life? Yes, why? To, to what? To, to, to look at the rasm of the day or the week? The day. Uh, somebody use this to look at the classes of the week often or more at the day? So this is something, uh, I don't know if they did, but this is something, since we're speaking about the finding, something interesting, which is the goal of the majority of students with this application, with this view, is looking at the schedule of the day, of the week, both. Because now it's the week. You, you don't see the, the day. 
Uh, you can change it. I, I cannot. I don't have this option. No, yes. You can, you can have multiple views. But here is not. Yes, absolutely. You can also have a monthly view if you want, or uh, templates of, you can have all the views that you want. Um, and if you go on the website in the schedule, instead you'll see by default the day view. If you try on the mobile, you see that by default looking for your courses, uh, in the public part you see the day view by default. So it's interesting. Uh, but all of these, you know, if you need to redo this, one question, one question is to understand which is the need here. This is, again, not what you want, but what you need. So if the vast majority use it for a daily, better. If everybody uses it for a daily view, then probably it's fine, the daily view. If a vast majority uses it for a daily view, then you should have both. But the default one is the daily. Or you allow people to decide which is the default one. Is the daily or the weekly? Up to you, choose one. I don't decide, or I decide one, but you can easily change, et cetera. So these are all solutions, but first of all, we need to understand which is the need here. Seeing the, the room, uh, I suppose, most importantly, how to reach them, if you click on it, if you touch on this, this thing, you can see the room, right? The, the map, how to reach the room, more or less and probably that is the need. How to do that is all open. Hmm? Clearly this can be improved. So mostly shame. Let's move on. Um, need finding. Need findings means understanding the user needs. And by reflection, the system requirement. Once we understand the needs, we can def derive the requirements for the system. Hmm? So what is need finding? Need findings, so what are needs? Needs are gaps in a system, in a process. Hmm? Uh, and need finding is the process, a series of methods that you can use partially together, alone, you can mix also some of these methods in discovering opportunities to solve these needs and so recognizing the gaps. So this is a, a, I'd say a good example, uh, a visual example of need finding, which is the need here, a shortcut. And it's evident the gap because people don't use the, the sidewalk but cut in the grass right in the grass. So this is a gap in the system of the sidewalks in, this is, a, this is a picture of a campus in the US. And so need funding is to do something like this in, in, the, in, in the grass. So everybody come here, well, why don't we do it properly? So figure out the story of what, what is happening so why, and why. What is happening? People are not using the sidewalk. Why? Why is important? Because they're lazy, because the sidewalk is interrupted, because the sidewalk maybe doesn't turn on the right here, maybe it doesn't turn here, so it's, it's actually a long way to go. We, we, do, we don't know in this picture, but the why and the what what people are doing and why they're doing that is important, is central to need finding. So figure out that story and tell a new story. And the main need finding question is actually one that you're not going to ask directly, but is what do user need? Uh, I told you, and, and then there are other questions connected to the who are the user? in the specific domain that you are picking, who are the users? Is everybody? Is students? Is the elderly? Is people with a specific disease? Who are the users? If you are understanding the needs to improve something, 
how they are doing it now, this same something, and in which context they are doing that. And why we can, this is not really a question for, for the finding, it's more for you, why we can just ask them? Why we can just say, tell me your need? Not down the need and we, we leave. Why is it not working? So we, we need a series of methods to extract need, find need, because we cannot ask. So it's, let me tell you this. Um, there is this story, I think that is a story, of Henry Ford. You know Henry Ford, who is Henry Ford? The car maker, you know Ford, the cars, okay. Henry Ford, the first, the one that created the company and created the first car. Um, when the story is that at a certain point, a journalist, somebody asked him, um, what if you asked people what they wanted? And the answer was, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have tell me, so before the invention of the car, the car, of his car, clearly, that they wanted a faster horse. So what is the problem of this question? It, it, it's right, I mean, they were using horses and they needed a faster horse. What is the problem of this, of this question? So why we can just ask them, what do you want, a faster horse? What's your, what's your next step? Is this a need, a faster horse? Or not? Yes, no? Who say yes? Who say no? One, the other two, the other doesn't know? Why is not a need? Why is not a need? The need you can extract the need for that. That is a want. What do, you, what do people want? The people want a faster horse, which is the need. They need to go from place A from, to place B faster. That is the need. Then it could be a horse, a plane, a car, a bicycle, whatever, but the need is going from place A to place B faster than do, they do now. This is a want, and you recognize it as a want because this is a solution. They tell you, I want a better horse. By engineer it, a better horse. Do a, do a, a faster horse. They don't tell you the need. The, yeah. the need is, again, going faster from one place to the other. And then, if you receive this question, you can extract the need, and then you have to decide what do you want to do? Do you want to create a car? It's fine. Do you want to create a bicycle, an electrical bicycle? That's also another option that satisfies that need. Do you want to buy engineer an horse? That's another option that you have to evaluate. It's time consuming, yes, no. Do you have money, competencies, expertise to do that? But the need is going faster from one place to, to the other. And Henry Ford created a faster horse that is the car, that allow people to go faster from one place to the other. And we are not using horses anymore, but cars, with all uh, another kind of problems, but that's not mm, related to this, okay? So this is, this is probably fictionary, it doesn't happen really, probably, but it's attributed to Henry Ford as a story, this, this sentence people would have asked for a faster horse that ultimately the car is a sort of faster um, thing that allow people to move from one place to the other, even back then. But it's totally different from a, from a horse. So this is the distinction in this, let's say, uh, fictionary way between a want and a need. A want expressed typically a solution based on their perspective. People knew horses, 
use horses to, to move. And so they refer to their perspective, to what they knew, horses, for movement. They cannot imagine something different from that. So, but from that question, from that answer, we can extract. So we cannot ask them because they will tell us their version of the story based on their own experience. And they are typically not designer, creators, developer, engineer. They are the users, the ones that we're going to use and will refer with their own language and their own word. is up to us to go from the specific sentence to a need. That's why it's called find, need finding. And we need to speak about extracting needs. So the first, one of the first things that we, we have to consider in need finding is to understand who are the users that we want to consider. Who are the users of our system? It's a uniform set of users or there are different categories or groups? Are the young, old, expert, non-expert, etc.? So again, if you want to redo the polit polytechnic application, who are the users? <laughs> Student, teachers, you're missing one. It's fine. I mean, it's correct. Students, teachers, and we are also technician, administrative personnel in the university, the one that stay in the secretary rooms. And not only that, but a lot of other people that may need to use the application, maybe, with a different set of functionality than you or me. And then, let's take students. We can say that students are a uniform category within Polytechnico for the usage of the application? No, why not? Part-time, full-time students, they don't think they change a lot in the functionality of the application. They will just see less courses, probably. There is another difference. If they have disabilities, could be, but there is a simple, let's say, Foreign students is closer, closer to the answer of, of the category. No. Mm, yes, where they are in the city, but there is still one more significant difference. Uh, language, well. Yes, it's something to consider, together with disability in places, but about user. You can have at least two categories of users. One includes foreign students. Closer, not the degree, closer. Uh, well, excluding the Erasmus students and foreign students, how, um, how long you, also including them actually, but let's say without them, how long you were in the university system? How many years? Three, five, four? Hmm? In this university. Second year here. Then, five. Uh, and probably some Erasmus students are here since one month or less. Is not this a difference, the experience that you have with polytechnical rules, polytechnical places, polytechnical procedure? It's something that you learned over time. You don't have, you didn't do anything. You just learned by errors, by asking, by writing on telegram groups, etc. But it's something that now you have, so he, is, he knows how to change the, um, the colors. <laughs> so he's an expert user in a way, uh, good for you. And, but one person that just arrived here, first year, first semester, doing analysis, mathematic one, and chemi chemistry and computer science, first year of engineering, 
and download the application and it, it has the entire world of Polytechnic in front of him with credits. Hmm? Did you know which, which, what, we, what is a credit in the first year, first day of the university? Probably more or less, not everybody. Now you should know what is a credit of a course, right? So all this knowledge is actually, you have two kinds of users, if you, even if you speak about at least two. The novices, the ones that are just arrived, and the more experienced one. And then you can differentiate. Uh, foreign students with a knowledge in another university are, can be considered experienced or not. In which group you put them? I create another group for, for Erasmus students or not? I consider them novices. It depends which is the system, but if you want to redo the polytechnic application, probably you will also need to consider them part, part novices, part experience. So knowing, understanding which are the users we are referring to is important because it allows us to have different perspective. If I ask you what is going wrong for in the schedule, you can have a list of, a list. If I ask a first year student here since one week will tell me totally different things. Because maybe some problem that you had three years ago now are solved. But there are others that you don't consider because you are so used to the system that you don't have that perspective anymore. So knowing who are the user, deciding, understanding who are the user will allow you to then speak with the proper people, not avoid any perspective that are useful for you. If you are doing, let's say, something for all the users of the students of the university. Hmm? So try to, let's say, as written here, split the categories hmm? and not just say students. Because students means too many things. And then yes, there is also disability, there is also uh, other factors, the place in which they are, etc. The degree in which bachelor, master, there are factors, but there are factors in the choice that you make. Uh, typically, you are not a representative user. Hmm? Um, because you know it, how things work. You have your designer, creator, developer, engineer, perspective, skill, knowledge, background, interest that is not the same of everybody else, uh, except by change in some cases. And the cases are you are doing the polytechnic application and you are a student. Um, so you can have uh, some perspective, but you still need to speak with the others because it's just one perspective. It's not you can have other perspectives from other degrees, other ages, etc. Et uh, or you are a developer, you want to create a developer tool, you are a developer, you probably are start with some advantages. Hmm? And or, but you are still not a representative user, you are an expert. You are doing an expert evaluation of a specific domain. Hmm? You are doing an expert evaluation on the, let's mention that again, on the Polito app, mm? but you're doing the expert evaluation of that. Mm? So you are not the representative user, you are the expert that is evaluating that with knowledge that you have as an expert. And in a company, the client is not a, typic, is not a representative user. Mm? Uh, similar to boss, manager, director, etc. Mm? They speak on behalf of other people but if you are able to speak with the other people, it's better. You have more realistic, always more realistic insight from the people that ultimately have to use your system, not their manager. They, yes, know more or less how it works, but it's not the one that every single day uses the system. Hmm? So how we can know the user? on the side who are the user. There are a few ways, uh, two main categories, uh, let's say, two and a half. The first category is, well, let's talk with people. That's a good way to get information, to get perspective. And how we can talk with people, with surveys, with interviews, with direct involvement, like in the participatory design, which we design together with user. And the goal of talking with user is to understand 
the behavior, the current process, the pinpoints, the workaround, like the piece of um, the, the, the piece of paper written close to the to the switches in that home, in that smart home, we have seen the hour before. That is a workaround for something that doesn't work. And if you speak with people, you can also see this workaround. And or you can also watch user hmm? with observation sessions, with video recording, with analysis. So you don't talk with user, but you observe how they behave in their environment, in their context. And then you can discuss, you can follow up with an interview, but the key point is observing, not speaking, observing. The other one is that speaking. And then in some cases, limited cases, you can also try to imagine a user. Maybe when a real user are not available. Um, so you can try to imagine, to build um, an imaginary user that is detailed, but is hypothetical. So if you want to do something for the, for people that go in space, maybe they are not really easy to reach out. But if you need to do things for, for them, because your company say you have to, to, to create this application for astronauts, you don't have users, you can try to read something on the internet, to some interviews, you try to understand them, and then build a fictionary user that is uh, a description of a hypothetical person in that given role, or hypothetical people in that given role. So that you can represent them in some way. Just with the outline and then we can stop here. What we are going to speak about on Monday is these methods. Among the all the need finding methods, we are going to speak about observation, watching user. A diaries that is still a sort of watching user, but for longer time. Since you cannot go living with a person for three years, you can leave a diary there as a methodology. Uh, interviews, that are the interviews you can imagine. Uh, serve a focus group that are focus group, interviews in groups. Uh, survey questionnaires, typically online or on papers, and then contextual inquiry that mix observation with interviews in one unique method. And with that, we will see on Monday with the rest of these, and have a nice weekend.